you guys. There you are. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Uh, we are having um, participants joining from Ukraine, as you can imagine, the uh, situation with electricity and Wi-Fi is, is, is very unstable. So we're still expecting one other participant to join us, but um, we're happy to have two of them on the call as of now, and hopefully uh, it will stay that way for the rest of the meeting. Um, my name is Adi Jumhur. I am the Associate Director of the Center for Slavic, Eurasia, and East European Studies at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill the host of today's event. I am pleased to welcome you to um, today's conversation celebrating the publication of a dictionary of emotions um, in a time of war, 20 works by Ukrainian playwrights. This anthology was published um, by Laertes Books and Independent Press here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And I'm pleased to see its founder and editor-in-chief, Nina Camberos, um, in the audience today. Um, the texts in the anthology, and I'm sure John will tell us more about that, were written by the members of the Theater of Playwrights in Kyiv in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine on February 24th of last year. So we are approaching that sad one year anniversary uh, of, of the war. Um, we are fortunate to have two of uh, the contributors and playwrights, as I mentioned earlier on, on a call, joining us from Ukraine. Our, um, Oksana, um, um, Gra sorry, I, I have it wrong in my notes. So, Gritsenko, thank you, Oksana, and uh, Ludmila um, Timoshenko. Uh, and we're uh, hoping that Andriy um, Bondarenko will be able to join as well. He's trying to connect, and they're out of electricity from Kiev, in Kiev, from what I'm hearing at the moment. I, and I also want to say I've got a message from him. Oh, he's in. He's in. He just oh, great. oh wonderful. wonderful. Andriy, Andriy, so, where are you? Are you here? We're complete. There's John Varnden. Where's Andri? Where's Andri Bandarienka? Is he on page two? Good goodness, we have lots of folks. Holy Moses. Okay, it's going to take me forever to find him. Andri, are you here? Yeah. And out. He says, I'm in and out. <laughs> he and lost out. connection. Okay. He lost right. connection trying again. Uh, he had this. I'm just going to say that this is a board, everybody else, but we need, we really want Andri with us. He said he was having the same trouble I was having in. He was in a waiting room that said the host will, will let you in shortly. And there's there's nothing there's nothing to do there. There's, you mm. can't put in a number. You can't put in a meeting ID. So whatever. Must be a flawed uh, link. Yeah, but it sounds like he's here. So that, that's hopefully good. Hopefully so. Yeah. He says he's yeah. trying again. Okay, shall I, shall John, I pick John, this? Yes, well, sir. John, while I have you speaking, I'll just, if you, if you, if you allow, quickly introduce you since you will be moderating the discussion. Uh, John Friedman, uh, a translator and theater critic, uh, um, uh, also an American writer and translator who, after working for 30 years in Russia, now resides in Greece. Um, during his time in Moscow, um, John was a theater critic uh, for the Moscow Times for over 20 years. His play, uh, Dancing Not Dead, uh, published in 2011, was winner of the Internationalist Global Play Contest, um, and his short play, Five Funny Tales from the Heart of Buenos Aires, published in 2013, has been performed in New York City, Chattanooga, and Edinburgh. He has translated over 100 plays, of which productions have been mounted in five continents. He's also a director of the Center for International Theater Development's Ukraine Hope Initiative, um, and with that, John, I'd like to turn it over to you and just uh, alert the audience that I'm not alert, but encourage you and invite you to actually ask questions during the conversations. You can do so by putting your questions in the chat or you can raise your hand and someone will call on you. Uh, John, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled to be here with Nina Camberos, who is has become. I, I'm seeing you live for the first time, Nina. I know. This is the first time I'm seeing you live, <laughs> and you are one of my best friends. You are one of my favorite people in all of the world. Same here. Uh, Same here. <laughs> Nina, Nina, and Laertes Publishing Press uh, have done an astonishing job <clears throat> on this book, which is called the Dictionary of Emotions in a Time of War. The title came from one of the works by uh, Elena Astasieva. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, I was thinking about it the other day. You couldn't possibly come up with a more perfect title for this book, for this time, for what this book does. Uh, it, in this book, which collects uh, the texts of 20 writers, uh, it is indeed a dictionary of emotions uh, all written in a time of war. And it is a, I wanna say, first off, I wanna say that it's a funny book. 
uh, at times. Oksana Gritsenka is a very, very funny writer. Um, and, uh, and, and her texts are, they remind me of Gogol. I, I, I wrote that in the introduction. Uh, they remind me of early Gogol in their, they're just in, in, incredibly, uh, the, the, the perfection of the, of the sentences and lines uh, coming out of this very short piece, which has you laughing at incredibly horrible things. Uh, it, it's, it's marvelous, Mar it's marvelous writing. Uh, Lyudmila Timoshenka has uh, contributed not only one of the most popular works that we, uh, that we collected, uh, it's called My Terra, um, but she is also a tremendous, artist and I want to I want to share with everybody a painting that she did for me uh, I as I have talked often uh, about the fact that what we are doing in our project is we are throwing plays at Putin and I wrote to her one day and I said I said Luda I said I, I keep talking about throwing plays at Putin and I see it as an image in my head do you if you happen to see the same image or a similar image I would love to see you make a picture of it and she made this incredible painting which she sent to me and I received recently. And it sits here in a place of pride on my desk. Uh, these are incredibly talented people uh, 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 who have gathered around a theater called the Theater of Playwrights in Kiev, um, which essentially, officially does not even exist yet. It was supposed to open uh, last March 12th. Um, as you can imagine, the events of February 24 and following uh, caused that uh, event to be postponed. The artistic director, Maxim Kurichkin, uh, at the time said that, uh, yes, we're not going to open. And when we open, we will open. It will be a, 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 a an, an event of our victory over Russia when we open our theater. We won't open the theater until we have defeated Russia. Um, and uh, so uh, I don't want to waste too much time talking about extraneous things. I, I do want to say very briefly that I run an overall program called the Worldwide Ukrainian Play Readings, which has had over 300 readings in 30 countries in 25 languages. Um, it's a huge project. Uh, we have gathered over 250 plays in, you know, in over 20 languages. Um, and uh, these things are performed, uh, read, performed, staged, filmed uh, all over the world. And we've been doing this for 11 months. And out of this project, uh, this book, A Dictionary of Emotions in a Time of War, with the writers of the Theater of Playwrights, has grown. Um, I'll come back to that a little bit later. Uh, I would really like to let the writers have a, an opportunity to say a little bit about their work and about the theater, um, because uh, I've been working with, with I've been working with these people now for eleven months, and I and I really don't even know them that well. This is terrible. Um, I would like to ask you, Oksana, um, how did you become involved with the theater of playwrights? How did that happen? Oh, uh, well, it's actually a funny story. Uh, <laughs> <view. laughs> uh, once we were meeting uh, with Luda and uh, a few other friends who are also from the Theatre of Playwrights, and we were celebrating our work on, um, on one screenplay. Uh, it was my place and we are having nice conversation and drinking and they told me like, you know, actually we are organizing the theater and playwrights, would you like to join? And I was like, well, wow, that sounds very interesting, so, sounds so exciting. And they said, okay, we'll, uh, uh, we'll invite you to join. And then uh, there was like a conversation, it was online chat. Uh, where they suggested me to join and other uh, playwrights who were also members of this chat, they kind of uh, uh, discussed my, uh, uh, my candidacy. And <laughs> in a few minutes, I became one member, one of the members of this chat. And that's how I, I joined them. I actually knew most of them, some of them pretty well, some of them I heard about, uh, I read uh, I read their plays or I watched their plays and I was very much excited to, to become one of them. 
Uh, Luda, were you one of the uh, writers that uh, uh, allowed Oksana to join the theater, that invited her to join? Uh, you know, uh, uh, Maxim Kurich can create this uh, theater of playwrights and uh, first our rule, it must be only 20 um, uh, playwrights. Uh -huh. But uh, we are already 20 and uh, Oksana was the 21st. Uh, but for, fortunately, one of uh, playwrights uh, said, uh, okay, I don't want to be with uh, you because I have a lot of work. And he uh, came out and uh, it is very good that Oksana uh, was us. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And, and um, I'm wondering, how is the theater organized then? I mean, is there any organization or does it just kind of live its own life? Once we uh, we met, uh, Maxim Kurechkin invited us to one place. Uh, a few of playwrights. It uh, probably will, uh, was um, uh, seven or ten, and we discussed about um, how um, uh, Ukrainian playwrights is a very um, um, very small piece of Ukrainian drama because nobody asked. Uh, Ukrainian playwright uh, to uh, to take the, uh, their play. Uh, nobody invited us to the rehearsals, and uh, we will uh, we we started to think um, how we um, how we uh, uh, could organize our um, community without uh, uh, asking to the artist uh, director in uh, all theater, without uh, asking to directors in, in, inside of this uh, theater. And uh, it uh, started uh, this idea to create um, uh, theater where is playwright uh, will main and the text uh, uh, will um, in, in, sight, in, in, in the middle of uh, another situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wanna tell a little story that uh, puts me not in the best light. Um, uh, uh, I think it's funny enough to tell. Uh, this was early, very early on when I was talking, I was corresponding with, with Maxim Kurichkin uh, about, the writers in the theater of playwrights and he was telling me about the, the theater of playwrights i was only just learning about it so i really didn't know much about it this was back last march and at one point i wrote to him i said something about you know and and something about your writers and max wrote back to me he says john <laughs> don't ever write my writers he said all of the people that take part in our theater are incredibly independent. And if they ever hear anybody talking about my writers, he said, they will kill me and they'll kill you too. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I point this out. I point this out first because it's kind of funny. And, and, uh, but second of all, um, uh, I'm gonna interrupt and just say that I just got a note from Andre that he, he, he lost connection again and he can't connect. Um, I'm just going to tell him not to worry about it, and then I'm going to introduce him anyway. Um, one of the things that we have learned, one of the things that we have learned over the last year is the incredible resourcefulness and independence of the Ukrainian people. And uh, I think this has astonished even people who, who knew Ukraine, even people who had worked with Ukraine, I think, I, I think this has been astonishing to everyone except perhaps Ukrainians. I, I can't speak for Ukrainians. I'll, I'll have to ask uh, uh, Oksana and, and Dudmila to uh, weigh in on this if, if they want. But uh, I have noticed this in the, uh, in the theater of playwrights. The theater of playwrights is a, is a small, uh, cosmogony of, of Ukrainian culture and, and society. And it's a fascinating thing to watch uh, these incredibly talented people uh, work independently and with one another and support one another. Uh, and I'm also astonished by the way all, virtually all, other, all of the other writers in Ukraine who are not part of the theater of playwrights are incredibly supportive of the theater of playwrights. 
um, there does not seem to be uh, any any sense of you know oh the, these guys over there in their theater and you know we're different. Everybody is is uh, there's tremendous support among all of the Ukrainian writers for each other. That is my understanding. In any case, um, I want to uh, uh, say a couple of words about Andrei uh, Bandarenka, who is not going to be out. He says, "I hope maybe electricity will appear." and I'll have normal internet. Uh, if it happens, it happens great. If it doesn't, uh, uh, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of uh, information about Andri, who is a dramaturg in uh, the city of Lviv uh, at the Puppet Theater there. Uh, he is a PhD. Uh, he's been a journalist in his life. He's a screenwriter and a playwright. And uh, he is um, one of the most uh, popular of all of the writers uh, in uh, my uh, worldwide Ukrainian uh, play readings project. Uh, his works have been performed uh, 80 or over 80 times in the last year. Uh, the, the piece that's in the book uh, is it, it, called Survivor Syndrome. Uh, it has been performed 30 times. Another piece that he wrote, which is called Peace and Tranquility, which is translated by John Farndon, uh, our colleague who was here with us, uh, was turned into a film, uh, was an award-winning award film. It's also been read at many, at many uh, theaters and many events. And uh, Andre has written other uh, pieces too that have been performed. So uh, he is uh, basically the leader uh, of, of all of the writers in terms of uh, works performed. Oksana Gritsenka's uh, uh, piece, The Pete Upon Personnel uh, Carrier, which is a, a marvelous, marvelous, marvelous short story. I mean, it, you can see it as a, you can see it any way you want. You can see it as a, a monologue. You can see it as a short story. I read it as a short story. I think it's a brilliant short story. Um, it's been performed 25 times. Yudmila Tymoshenka's uh, My Tara, uh, which is based on uh, uh, it's not based on it. It takes the the notion of of the uh, the estate of Tara from Gone with the Wind and and plays with it. Uh, has been performed over forty times uh, uh, around the world. So these pieces are you know they they have really been picked up. They have really been uh, uh, successful. And and I wanted to ask. Uh, I, I I get lots of letters from from writers that I'm working with and and for the most part. Very few people have been performed as often as as uh, you guys are being performed now. Um, what does I'm just I'm curious, you know, aside from the fact that it's just pleasant, uh, Oksana, I'll ask you. Um, aside from the fact that it's just fun, nice, uh, what what is the importance of being able to have your ideas, your words, your take on what is happening in Ukraine right now reach the world? Uh, the way these works have been doing. It's, it's hard to answer. Um, of course. I don't know. It's it's. I think it's a chance to be heard, and also it's the chance uh, um, to make sure that people would not forget about what is going on in Ukraine over this year. Because I'm really much afraid of this because it's a long war. It's a, law, a war which started like almost a year ago. And uh, since I was covering this war since uh, 2014, when it basically started, now we call as, it- As a journalist, as a journalist as a, or as, as a, a journalist? As a journalist, yeah, as a journalist right. yes. Uh, I noticed that uh, uh, like very soon the uh, uh, Western media started losing interest in that conflict. And thus, there will be less interest, and it 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 it's becoming it was kind of becoming a forgotten forgotten war. There was it was even like on the headlines already, like back in twenty eighteen, like Ukraine's forgotten war. Now we have a so called big war. At least that's how soldiers on front lines call it. Our big great war, great war. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, like first world war. Right. Right in many countries so uh i i, I was worrying like from the first month that it, it's uh, it's gonna be like a few more months and then it, it the the world will get uh, tired of our war 
and uh, it will be getting less interest and we will be like face to face with Russia alone. That's all I'm still worrying, worrying about. And I hope uh, these stories which we are keep on writing, they will be able to keep alarm about the events which are going on in Ukraine now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, of course, that is what all of this, uh, what we're all doing is, is trying to make sure that the, the conversation continues. Um, uh, uh, Mila, I, uh, do you, are you working with a theater right now? Are you doing any production anywhere or preparing a production at any theater? Uh, I work uh, in Stuttgart uh, Stadttheater. Uh, I and uh, another playwright, Marina Smidanets, uh, we are uh, together and we create a new project um, uh, under the title uh, City X uh, Fragments of the War. Oh. It will be uh, like uh, audio walking. Um, uh, we invited uh, Ukrainian refugee, uh, like uh, mass actors, inside of our uh, audio walking. It, and it will be um, uh, like reminding to German people about uh, what 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 is the situation in Ukraine now and uh, what is is the city. Uh, uh, it's called City X, but it uh, means that it uh, could be uh, all of city uh, sure. in Ukraine, yes. Yes, yeah. That, and and th this is actually uh, uh, important information. You're outside of Ukraine. You're working in Germany. Um, yes. do, do, you go, do you go back? Uh, I, I know that, you know, uh, Natalia Varajbit, who is one of the writers in the group, she she kind of goes back and forth. She every once in a while I see she's in Kiev or she's in Lviv or she's in Vienna. Uh, are are you going back and forth or are you just staying in Germany right now? I have a terrible situation because Stuttgart only one city in Germany who uh, uh, don't give to Ukrainians uh, this uh, documents called resident permit. And if I uh, will go to Ukraine, I could know uh, to went back because um, because uh, I, I don't have this document. Right. But I, I'm here with my son, and he uh, go to the school in Germany, and I could not uh, to go and leave he, him here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Oksana, are you are you in in uh, Ukraine right now? Uh, yes, I'm based in Ukraine. I also travel from time to time, but I'm uh, I'm most of the time in Kiev. You're most of the you're in, in Kiev most of the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Nina, I want to ask you a question. Um, uh, I showed up on your figurative doorstep with uh, a bunch of texts, and I said, "Here, I want to do this book." Uh, I don't remember what I said to you, but something the effect of "Here, I want to do this book." Please look at them. And and if my my recollection is that <laughs> five or ten minutes passed, and I got I you wrote back and said yes, I, it might have been fifteen, not ten, I don't know. Um, how how do these texts differ from from what you have published? You've published a lot of work uh, from a lot of countries and a lot of cultures. My understanding is this is the first Ukrainian work you've published. First, is, is that true? Yes, that's true. Yeah. Um... I suppose they're more narrative in a certain sense. They're more anecdotal in a certain sense than other things I've published um, in general. And I think most of the other plays probably had a longer time to ferment, you know, before they were published. Right. Like I published some things about the missing in, in Kosovo, but they were written one or two years after the war was finished, you know, or, and so everything was written more in retrospect, you know, than, than more, it, nothing, nothing has had the immediacy that these, that these have, I would say. Yeah, yeah, that indeed is the incredible power of these works, is that they are fixing in time real emotions real events real people uh as they actually happen 
they are, I don't know, I'd have to, we'd have to talk to every one of the writers if we wanted to talk about how much literature is in these texts and how much is just witness taking place. I, I did have that conversation with Pablo Aria, uh, one of the 20 writers. He, he wrote a beautiful piece for the book. Um, and uh, I, I, I wrote to him at one point because when I was writing the introduction, I wanted to know if I should talk about Pablo Aria or about his narrator. And he goes, no, 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 no. He said, that's, that, that, all, that, that all happened to me. That's me. I'm, that's me writing. Um, he, he makes no pretension about it being literature in the sense of about a character. Um, uh, and I find this is probably one of the most important qualities. There's a lot of important qualities, but this is an important quality of these texts. These texts, 10 years from now, 30 years from now, you know, these texts are going to define the experiences, the visions, the thoughts, the feelings of these writers who put these texts down at this time. I, I think it as this book is a is a witness to one of the most tragic periods that we have known in recent times. It's one of the most tragic events of my life. Uh, I know it's one of the most tragic events of many of the people that I work with and, and that I live with. And uh, this book, Nina and I have talked about this. Uh, I, I believe so deeply in the value importance of this book. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't overstate it. Um, I think this book is going to be a monument to people the people who wrote it, it will be a monument to the time and the tragic time in, in, in which the texts were, were written. Um, I think it's necessary to add here uh, that, and it's, it is very necessary to add here, uh, that something like this is a team, is teamwork. A book like this, particularly when it's written by 20 people, uh, is, is a, it's a team. Um, but this is particularly a, a, a teamwork because uh, the book would not have come about had it not been for Philip Arnaud and the Center for International Theater Development in Baltimore. Um, I was talking with Maxim Kurichkin about how we could get some text. He, all of the writers who prepared texts that were supposed to be read on, on March 12th last year. And I wrote to Max and I said, Max, send me those texts. Max said, no. And I said, what do you mean? No, Max. <laughs> I've worked with Max for 25 years. We are old friends. And I said, what do you mean? No. And he said, no, I'm not going to send them to you. And I said, Max, I have 10 countries right now. I, they want stuff. I've got to get it translated. I have to do it. I, I don't have time to mess around. Max, come on, send me these texts. And he goes, no, I'm not going to send them to you. They're, 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 they're gone. They're dead and gone. Those texts, I don't know, maybe someday we can come back to them and, and, and think about them. But he said, they mean nothing. I said, okay, okay, so what do we do? And he says, well, he says, what we have to do is we have to find a way to commission plays. I said, okay, okay. When I heard the word commission, I thought Philip Arnaud because Philip Arnaud is a genius with, with uh, funding uh, theater projects. And um, I, said, uh, I, I said, I can go to Philip and, and I can see what we can do. And uh, I said, how much, how much do you think would, would 500, dollars per work be okay and max says no he says 500 john 500 dollars in peacetime eh, that's a nice amount of money he said but in wartime he says they need to have a thousand dollars i said okay and i went to philip and philip said in less than one second he said good i'll do it and he commissioned 15 words uh i i, I want to mention our, our great friend uh noah burkstead green from the Sputnik Theater in London, who also commissioned a work. Uh, he, and he just has a small budget for a very small theater called the Sputnik Theater. And he told me, he says, John, he said, I have no money right now. I've, wait, I've used it all, but I'm going to empty out the coffers of my theater in order to uh, uh, commission a work. And the work that he commissioned was, was a piece called Peace and Tranquility by Andriy Bondarenka, which John Farndon translated. 
and uh, it, as I said earlier, it went on to be made into a, an award-winning film and has been read all over the world. So uh, there are lots of people. Uh, uh, Nina is is incredibly important. Philip Arnaud is incredibly important. Noah Berkstead Green stepped up when it was time. The writers have been fabulous. Um, Maxime has been wonderful in 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 keeping things going and. Uh, John Farndon translated two of the works in the book. Uh, John Farndon has translated dozens of, of, of plays for uh, the overall project that I'm doing, the worldwide Ukrainian play readings. Um, my neighbor, who is from Dnipro, the city of Dnipro in Ukraine, she uh, is a family member. Uh, Oksana, my wife Oksana and I uh, helped uh, her relatives uh, leave Dnipro as the war was was reaching them um, and they came here to Greece to live with us and uh, I worked with uh, Natalia Bratus uh, who is a native of Dnipro and she helps me translate uh, the, the texts so it's this incredible it's this incredible teamwork and and uh, I, I couldn't be happier for the people that are in it and and, and prouder of the people who are, are taking part. Uh, have you, uh, 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 Oksana and Lyudmila, have you seen the book yet? Has it reached anybody in, in uh, Ukraine or in Germany? Uh, I don't on think... the, only online uh, in your pictures. Aha, uh -huh. well, here, look Can at it again. <laughs> yeah. I'm very much looking forward. I know. Well, you're you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Sh show it. Show it to him again, uh, Nina. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This is my <laughs> fault because it's been hard to figure out what route to use to get things to Ukraine to keep them safe. And um, but I will remedy that. <laughs> you should be you should be receiving copies soon. I I promise. I promise. <laughs> are, uh, uh, are there are there any questions from from anybody coming in? Is there anybody that would like to uh, uh, ask any questions of the writers or anybody else? Thanks yeah. for checking, John. Yeah, there's a couple of questions in the chat. I don't know if you're able to see those or. If, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stay. Answer. I'm trying to stay on chat with with Andre at the same time, so I'm not. Okay. Let's, I'm let's happy see. to read them to 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 you and and, and with Mila and yeah, Oksana. So the first question is from Michelle Rifkinfish, um, asking if you could please discuss the title of this anthology, a dictionary of emotions in time of war. How did you decide on this title, and can you elaborate on how it relates to the plays? No, uh, I'll show you the 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 work. It's the first work in the book that is called a dictionary of emotions in a time of war. It's by Yelena Astasiva, uh, who is now living in Turkey. She first, when, when she left Ukraine, after, when the war began, she went to Ireland, and it was too cold, and she didn't like it. She loved Ireland, but she said it was just too cold. I can't stay here, and she ended up going to Turkey. She now lives in Turkey. Um, and uh, she wrote this piece that had this title. And when uh, Nina and I were discussing uh, the possible titles of the book, I think I suggested three or four things. And, and I realized that this is the title, but I just thought, well, I'm gonna try them all out and see. And Nina came back and said immediately, no, no, no. The title is a dictionary of emotions in a time of war. And, and the, the piece itself, you know, you, you can read the piece yourself, of course, um, but it is a it, it's a collection of very short vignettes uh, uh, discussing different emotions that, that the that the narrator goes through uh, in living through experiences in discussing things with Ukrainian friends with Russian family uh, and and it's a, a, a kind of a shotgun approach to what somebody was going through in early March early mid March of. 2022. So uh, that's where the title is from. It's from uh, Yelena Stasiva's uh, piece, and it, it is the perfect title for our book. Let's see, there's some, some more questions here, huh, uh, Adi? Um, uh, more more of a comment um, from from um, Jeannie Anderson. Uh -huh. um, no question there, but if, if I may just build on Michelle's question and John, your answer, and invite uh, uh, yeah. Mila and Oksana to say a little bit about that too. Uh, a dictionary of emotions, I imagine, was 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 you know, especially as it relates to to various iterations of, of Russia's invasion in Ukraine going back to 2014. I wonder how your language, how your approach to your plays. 
um, has changed since 2014, uh, even prior to, to, to the invasion um, of last February. Seems like war as a subject has, has been picked up by many Ukrainian artists, filmmakers, um, writers, and I assume playwrights as well. So I was just curious, um, not being too familiar with your work, um, sort of how you grapple with um, the country being in war since 2014 and, and everything else that followed. Mila, you want to you take that first? I want to say thank you very much to Jeannie, uh, to her warm words about cat refugee. Uh, thank you. Uh, 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 question uh, was about uh, how how do we work during this period? How has how has your approach to your work changed to the, since twenty fourteen uh, uh, as opposed to now? Uh, before the war, I I wrote uh, comedy uh, and love story, uh, but after I. Uh, I, I, I won't, will not able to, to do this uh, and the first um, months and, and, and now the first of February, but Ukrainian said that not first of February, but 333rd of, of February, because for Ukrainians, uh, our world uh, turned into the endless February uh, from the, the 24th. Uh, uh, of course, uh, my uh, my my text uh, changes a lot, but um, you know uh, I'm uh, here in Germany uh, from the March, uh, and uh, all my monologues, which I wrote uh, before coming here, uh, I wrote like uh, in uh, in the same time of uh, my feeling. Uh, and since that, I has lost uh, the right to write uh, the text uh, about how people feel in Ukraine. I only just uh, just think about it. Right, right. Uh, Oksana, uh, has, how has your work changed uh, since 2014? Did it evolve in any way or how, how has it changed or not changed? I'm it's hard to say. Actually, I, I'm uh, like a newcomer in uh, playwriting because I started doing it only in 2019 first. Before that, I was a journalist. And then in 2019, when the war was in a kind of a simmering state, like not really active, uh, it, uh, it was on the, on the background of all our work, but it wasn't the main topic very often. Uh, but in uh, but after uh, like February twenty fourth, everything obviously changed, and uh, I think um, actually uh, when I received this request from Max to write uh, a short play, I thought I would no no way do that because I thought it's just impossible to write about the war uh, in the second month of the war when I was like in absolutely shocking state. I was just doing journalism and I, I, I believed I, I could not do this. But then a fun event happened in my uh, hometown. Uh, armored personal carrier was beat upon <laughs> by local protesters. <laughs> and it was, <laughs> and it, it was the first event which made me laugh since the war started. And um, it was a kind of psychological relief for me at that moment. And at that, after that, I decided I want to write about this. And that's how I made this short text. I didn't think at all how people would perceive it. I would never imagine that it will get so, that many readings and so much interest. I'm very much appreciated for this and I'm still surprised that it got some such a big interest. For me, it was just a way to express my own, you know, my own, uh, concerns and, and 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 feelings everything what what was in, inside of me at that moment that's why i think this uh, this title a uh, dictionary of emotions is it's, it's absolutely pro perfect as you said john because yeah. it's really a set of our emotions in the first weeks of the war and it's fascinating to follow because there are uh, of the that I, I keep talking about 20 texts because there were supposed to be 20 texts 
and just as we lost uh, Andri Bandarienka today because of because of the situation of the war, the lack of the electricity at his home, uh, he couldn't con uh, connect with us. We also were supposed to have 20 writers in the book. Uh, Evgen uh, Markovsky was supposed to be one of the 20 writers. And uh, in the end, he was unable to deliver a text. He kept writing me that I will, I will, I will, I want to, I want to, John. I'll have it to you in a week. I'll have it to you next week. I'll, I'll just wait, hang on, I'll get it to you. And, th and then he disappeared, essentially. Disappeared from my view in any case. Um, and he never did get a text to us. And so the 20th writer in the book is, pre is, is uh, presented simply with a small text about the fact that Yevgen Markovsky intended to write, wanted to write a text, but because of the war was unable to do so. And frankly, I think there is something very fitting in that. I, I find it actually one of the one of my favorite pages in the book because it, it, it lets us know that in the end, this is not literature, this is life, this is tragedy, it is dangerous. Um, I should ask, do either of you, do Ludmila or Oksana, do you know uh, Yevgen uh, right now where he is? Do you know if he's okay? I know nothing about him right now. Markovsky. Yes, he, he is okay. He um, moved, uh, from the Kherson before uh this um uh, Zvilnenya, uh for liberation of the city yes 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 no. he's, okay. he's okay he's okay yes oh my uh, god yeah yeah well that's good to hear very good to hear um and and, and uh, <laughs> uh <clears throat> this is an emotional book it's an emotional book for that reason it's an emotional book for everything that everybody put into it, every single writer. I, I wanna ask John Farndon who is here and, and as I said, has done a lot of translation with me in the Worldwide Ukrainian Play Readings Project and did uh, two of the translations in, in, in the Dictionary of Emotions in a Time of War. And John, I just wanna ask your, uh, uh, your, your general reaction to doing work on these Ukrainian texts as, as time has gone on. You've done a lot of work and you've done a great work. I want to I, hear I, how, Yeah. Yeah, I think it's one of the most important things I've ever done. And it's been emotionally very challenging, but also emotionally exhilarating as well. I mean, I just want to say one thing about this particular collection of books, of plays, because I think it's actually, it, it's genre breaking as well as kind of being important work. One of the things it does is it puts the playwright center stage because mostly playwrights dramatize other characters and they write plays in which characters interact. But here in this series of plays, and I think it was forced upon by the necessity, the immediacy, the urgency, it is the writer who is center stage. The writer is sharing their experiences and the drama is between the playwright um, who is narrating or the characters you're creating and the audience. And I think that's what makes them extraordinarily powerful. And it's 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 a new genre because you can read, you've got 20 plays in here. You can read those plays as, as stories or you can stage them. They're very easy because they're short to say. And I think that immediacy is something that should change how, how we perceive drama. It's actually, to some extent, um, drama, falls behind the times and the Ukraine war has reinforced how urgent drama can be and should be. It's something, it's what you said, it's it's what you uh, earlier that you're shaking a fist at Putin with these plays. And actually drama has that power, which very few other art forms do to be immediate and challenging. And I think that's what I found excited about the plays in this thing. But I've also found that in, um, the other plays that I've that, that I've worked on is right. there are senses of immediacy in these plays. I think you Ukrainians can't afford to mess around. Um, and you realize in Western plays, often we're very um, elliptical. We we don't approach problems directly. And so I've kind of changed my view of drama, having witnessed the incredibly powerful statements that 
a force to by necessity, basically. So that's it's been very exciting as well as being um, incredibly moving. You think this is necessary work. Think, why do we work with drama if it's not necessary? And here it is necessary. So Absolutely. I'd like to say congratulations to everyone. And thank you for Nina for um, putting together such an extraordinary book in such an extraordinary way. Um, but thank you, Oksana and, and Lud for being here. And, and you know, Andre was the first places, place, first right place I worked on. And it was just right after that. This is what I'm committed to. <laughs> Yeah, I, I want to I want to reiterate that for me, this is the uh, depending on how you, one counts, this is my 12th or 13th book that I have put together. And this is far and away the most important, the most valuable, the most rewarding, uh, the most loved piece of work I have worked with in my life. And I'm pushing 70 years old. Um, so it's uh, it. Uh, I want to say thank you to uh, Lyudmila. I want to say thank you to Oksana. I want to say thank you to Andre. I want to say thank you to Maxime, everybody else uh, who is part of this book, who has, uh, you know, brought us into this horrible, untenable, unlivable, unbelievable, inexplicable situation, which we have all had to find a way in which to respond and try to do something. And uh, I'm endlessly grateful to everybody who has let me into their world and let me be part of this. You guys are all great. Thank you. I think we're, we're up on the hour, uh, Addie. So we're, you want to, do you want to wrap it up or do uh, you, you want to? Yeah, there were just maybe we, with a couple of minutes, uh, if we could address the questions that were in a chat one was coming from Jessica and the other for Emma's Emma's is somewhat easier it's a nice way to maybe conclude the, the conversation asking about how this initiative has changed and evolved since it was launched and what would you like um, to what would you like it to do or would you what would you like this to, to represent in the future or, or what are the next steps in terms of inviting maybe more playwrights uh, publishing more uh, of their work um, creating more spaces for conversations like this one. Do you have anything planned? I mean, the question seems to be going to both you and the other John, so two translators and the two writers. So yeah, uh, like I, I will just I will just say briefly that uh, Nina and I are going to have a lot of conversations over the next couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> Nina, prepare for it. <laughs> don't, 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 don't go hiding from me. Uh, <laughs> Because there's a lot of there's a lot of work that needs to be done, and a lot of work that can be done, and a lot of people that are willing and ready and able uh, to do the work. And so, yeah, there's there's all kinds of places this stuff can go. This book is 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 a is an incredible milestone. It's an incredible milestone for uh, I believe, and and I'm 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 able to say this because Maxim Kurchkin has written this to me that it's an incredible milestone for Ukrainian theater and drama. And if Mox hadn't said that to me, I might not have said it on my own, even though I, th even though I, I think it on my own. But since Max said it to me, I feel safe in saying that. that this book that Nina published for us so beautifully is a milestone for Ukrainian literature and drama and theater. And uh, I hope, I hope it's just a first step um, I know that the project, the, the overall project, uh, the worldwide Ukrainian play readings, that's that's continuing. We have uh, 30, 40 readings coming up in the next two or three months, and, and people are joining us all the time. I just translated brand new works by both Oksana Gritsenka and Dudmila Timoshenka yesterday. I just finished them yesterday and sent them off to put them up on our database. Uh, they're beautiful works, fascinating, powerful brilliant as as all of their work is uh so uh i'm gonna say this is just the beginning and of course the 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 thing is that we win the war the the the, the thing is that we win the war and we we the people who are here are going to win the war with talent with art and with uh with 
right-minded attitude towards the world, and that is going to win out. That's going to that's going to win out. It is. Yes, it is. Um, Any last thoughts from the writers, uh, Oksana, Mila? Any yes, final thoughts? Yes. I, in order for this book uh, to be published, uh, the work of incredible team uh, took place. Um, John uh, Friedman, uh, John Frandon, Natalia Bratus, Nina Camberos, uh, all the people uh, who uh, contribute, uh, uh, I want to say big, big thank you for your work. I will pass that on to Natasha. Oksana, did you I, want to add something? Yes. Just want to join what uh, Luda just said. I'm extremely grateful for what you've done for us, for uh, all this attention uh, which Ukraine is getting uh, through our voices. I just want to say that I'm now in Kiev and uh, it stands here as always, but it's much less fear than it used to be in the beginning of war. We kind of learn to live into it and I think we will win. Of course you will, yes. And I, I want to say, uh, 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 Lyudmila mentioned Natalia Bratus, and, and I failed to do that. And I, I want to very quickly mention my partner in translation, Natalia Bratus, who uh, uh, has helped me translate the Ukrainian text. And uh, she sits right behind me in uh, that green chair. <laughs> and I sit here at the computer. And she holds the text in front of her, uh, looks at it in Ukrainian, uh, reads it in Russian. Uh, I prepare translations beforehand. I get I get a, a very rough English translation together, and then she reads it to me in Russian because that's her uh, other uh, native language. And then I'm able to put it together, and we ask questions, and we discuss and everything. And I, I just want to say that there are often times when Natasha is reading, and and all of a sudden she goes silent, and then I hear that she's crying. And I wait a little bit. And she, when she pulls herself back together, I say, okay, yeah, okay, we're on this line. And, and she picks it up and she goes until she'll go silent again. And she'll start weeping. And uh, I just want to say that that is so powerful. That, believe me, folks, this most, I'm mostly saying this to Lyudmila and Oksana who are here and any of the other writers that might hear it sometime. Mm -hmm. That goes into the translations. That finds its way into the translations, you know. That attitude, that attitude of a, a Ukrainian woman who is finding it so hard to go through these texts. And yet she knows, and, and when she gets up and leaves, we finish working, we'll, we'll do so, so several texts. She'll get up and leave, and she leaves as though she's she's lost 20 years. She, she goes out with a light step. She, you know, the burden comes off of her. I mean, it's the it's the it's the genuine power of of art to heal, because she suffers so badly as she's working with the text. But having worked with the text, she's able to get up and walk away from it and 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 feel a lightness that she did not feel as as the work was going on. Um, that's a very important part of this book. I just wanted to to say that about Natasha Baratis. So thank you, Yudmila, for reminding me about Natasha's contribution. Can I say I something about Adi? Yes, please. Just that, um, you know, now that I'm rereading from the book itself without the care of the editor and the proofreader, <laughs> these, these, are, these texts are written in exquisite English. The, it, the translations are so beautiful. There, it's literature in English, and I just want to thank both my Johns <laughs> for that. Thank you, Nina. Thank you, John. It's so interesting what you just said. Uh, there's so you added a dimension to this title of a dictionary of emotion that it's from the writers, it's from the translators, from the readers. Everyone's equally invested in this text. That's so beautiful. And thank you for the work that you've done to bring this collection together and translate some of these works. and Thank you both to Oksana and Ludmila for your contributions for the time, most importantly, to join us today. Uh, we as a center will continue to promote um, Ukraine as much as we can. We are um, um, looking ahead to the uh, one year anniversary of the invasion and we'll organize several events 
in conjunction with that. But this, I think, was a very important start. And I want to thank everyone for being part of the conversation. And I want to thank the audience for joining us. I think we had a really great turnout. We have some uh, free copies of the book, um, a limited number of copies that we will make available to students. Um, I put the information in the chat, just be sure um, to email um, the center and claim your copy, but you can also purchase it through the publisher directly and that information is in the chat as well. So Nina, thank you for bringing this book to the US audience. Um, and unless there are any final last thoughts, I think we're ready to uh, let everyone go and uh, enjoy the rest of their day and the evening. I'd just like to say one, one small thing is, Please, John. Thank you. Thank you for the for the writers. And it's not just for expressing what they have written. I think that they are shining a beacon of integrity and power and honesty for the rest of the world. There's a lesson to all of us, not just getting their word out. I think it's a very important lesson for all of us. So I just want to say thank you to Ukrainian writers, but also to the Ukrainian people in general. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody. Lyudmila, Oksana, thank you. Wonderful seeing you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much for having us. Before you all go, I just saw Andri joining the call just now. Ah, so ah, Andri. Oh, Andri. We want to let Andri. him at least say hello, if nothing else. Andri, are you here? Yes. Yeah, hey. hello. I'm oh, here. Boy. <laughs> Glad to meet you. Good to see you. We're just, we're all just leaving. Uh, we can all sit and have a drink here if you'd like. <laughs> uh, well, I would like to. Uh, I have electricity now, so it appeared, so uh, I now I have a good internet connection. Uh, oh, goodness gracious. Um, I, let, me, uh, let me ask you, I mean, if, if people have to go, obviously we understand people have to go, but I want to give you an opportunity, uh, uh, Andri, uh, to tell us how, uh, how did you get involved with, with Maxim Kurochkin? And and the theater of playwrights. How did it how did it work out that you ended up as part of this group? Uh, it's a long story. Uh, and I think if Ludmila Timoshenko uh, uh, told her story, I think my story is similar because uh, it was uh, just uh, entering the uh, festival of playwrights. It was called the Week of Actual Drama, and uh, there was like a community uh, of playwrights and. Uh, I joined this festival. I begin to visit this festival like Ludmilla. And uh, so we became acquainted with Maxim and other people. And Maxim was like a central figure, like a soul <laughs> of this community. Right. And uh, so we, it, it, it was uh, 10 years of communicating with each other. <laughs> Once uh -huh. in a year when we visit, were visiting this festival in Kiev. So uh, something like this. When when did you sense, when did you feel that a theater was beginning to actually come together, a group of people that were, were going to create a theater? Was that in 2020? Was it 2021? Was it earlier? When 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 did you feel that was happening? Three years ago. Three years ago. Uh-huh. So it the with the the event that was supposed to happen, uh March 12th, 2022 actually started in around 2019. Yes, yes, but uh, it uh, uh, was a big process uh, to create our community, to right. uh, produce a rules inside uh, the Playwright Theater. And uh, then we very long looking for place where it could be. And then we are voting on the title of our theater. It uh, was during uh, two years and uh, uh, in, in 2022, we, we must uh, open on the right. on March and uh, Yeah, it uh, like uh, after the uh, Maxim came up with the idea of creating something like the theater, it uh, took uh, several years to uh, prepare everything. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, and uh, when everything was prepared, even we found uh, a proper uh, room uh, seller uh, then the war started so <laughs> yeah uh, this is a story yeah 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 uh I, I see you didn't jump off the balcony or fall off the balcony andre i'm, I'm glad to see that and andre went, went out on the balcony when he lost the internet he went out on the balcony 
he wrote to me. I, I've gone out on the balcony to try to catch internet. And I said, don't go too close to the edge. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a beautiful uh, moon shining, but no internet, <laughs> unfortunately. Well, I hope you enjoyed the moon. I mean, that's that's <laughs> a, valuable too. Um, okay, are we we we're we're a little over time, huh? Maybe maybe we should uh, wrap this up. Yes, sir. Sounds good. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks, John. Okay. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you, everyone. Good seeing you. We'll see you all again soon, sometime Thank somewhere. You. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Bye. 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 -bye.